Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Ted Carrier from OK Cooked, and today we're with John Fuller. with okraw.com to do another exciting episode for you and here where I'm catching up with a friend that I've known for a long time. You guys don't know who this is, maybe you guys do. Ted Carr. So Ted, why are you significant in the raw food movement? Wow, coming out, <laughs> coming out strong, John. Uh, why am I significant? It's a great question. I have to ask uh, the audience. <laughs> I've done, I've been, I've just been in it for a while. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's you, he's been doing it for 14 years, which is like twice the amount of time that many popular YouTube influencers are doing it these years, these days. And then also I've been doing it for 28 years. So I, I mean, I've seen Ted literally grow up in the raw food movement. I've seen him go through different stages where he's going all gung-ho this and then later, oh shit, he's eating cooked now and then he's doing this and he's, so he's really experimented a lot in here. You know, that's what I really want you guys that are watching today to take from this, take some, I don't want to call us old timers, but people with more experience doing this, and we've been through the school hard knocks, we've tried stuff on our bodies, we've seen what happens, and I mean, if you did, haven't put the years in, or the time in, right, you haven't been able to do all the experiments that we've seen, plus we've observed and talked to many people on the journey as well to kind of see how people can be more successful. I mean, that's what I really think about you, Ted. I mean, you're pretty systematic. Um, you're a really smart and intelligent guy. He's well read. He does a lot of research. He looks up so much stuff, and he implements it. And he's like looks at some of the science to make sure he's like on track and not just going with dogma, which maybe he did when he was younger. <laughs> yeah, I think young kids have a way of just uh, being very idealistic and just like going for what they think based on no experience, but what they think might be the best path. Yeah, which might not be the best path. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So let's get into your story, Ted. So why did you even get into raw foods? Did you have a debilitating disease? Did you want better performance? Did you want to gain muscles with? Yeah, uh, I got into it in the very, very, very first place as a natural next step in the progression of seeking the best. Oh, so you're already vegan and then you went raw vegan yeah. because people think that's the automatic transition yeah. that's going to take you to the next level, which yeah. I don't know that I'd... Well, it depends on what kind of vegan diet you are. You're right. If you're eating a junk food vegan diet, a raw vegan diet is definitely better, but maybe a whole food plant-based diet with a lot of raw and a little bit of heat processed food could be better than an all raw diet, in my opinion. Could be. Could be. Could be. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, first was vegetarian, purely for the ethics. Saw slaughterhouse footage and I was like, I don't want to hurt animals. I don't want to contribute to the slaughter and torture of animals. Went vegetarian, felt incredible, and I was like, what else is there? How can I optimize this diet? And everyone's like, oh, fuck vegetarians, I'm just be vegan. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes more sense. So then I went vegan, and I felt even better, and I was like, oh, how, can I, how can I do even better? And everyone's like, oh, just eat more raw foods. I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So I started eating more raw foods, and then uh, I was like, well, what's better than, you know, a high raw diet? And I was like, fully raw diet. So I was like, oh, let's do that. And then I felt like shit when I went fully raw initially. It felt terrible. And it was because I was just loading up on avocados, olives, oils, nuts and seeds. So you're doing a high fat raw vegan diet back in the day. Extremely high fat, and then I would have like fruit on top of that, and I just felt like crap. And one night I vomited, I vomited of all this stuff, and my dad was witnessing his son. And how old were you then? Um, 19. Wow, so you were a kid. So my dad thought I was a freaking going psycho, because my son's eating just all these nuts and seeds and all these oils and, and only shit. Raw stuff. And then he goes and has some fruit and he vomits. And then the next morning I wake up from that night of vomiting and all I wanted was like oranges, which is the last thing I ate when I vomited the night before. And so my dad's like, you just vomited on oranges, now you're eating a meal of oranges and he got so pissed. But um, that day after the vomiting well nuts and seeds, I was like, I don't want any more fat, I just want fruit. And started eating uh, just fruit for a few days, it felt fucking incredible. So did a lot of research on, on fruit and I found that I felt the best on fruit and that got me into like the fruitarian space. Fruitarian space, right? Yeah, I remember that, you know, that space when you were at. And I know you're very vocal because you have your own YouTube channel. What is that? Ted Carr. Ted Carr, yeah, I'll link down below in the description if you want to check that. So he, you have a lot of videos that'll say like, all fruit and fruit's the best and greens suck and all this kind of stuff. And, and then, you know, Not word for word. But not word for word, but yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> loose translation. Loose translation, like you believe that you could live on only fruit and you didn't need any greens because yeah. 
they weren't desirable for you and they didn't taste good to you at that time or whatever. So how did that go for you? Yeah, there was a time in Thailand where you can watch these videos. I, I it's all archived like, on YouTube. It's all on YouTube. You haven't deleted anything. Uh, one of the videos I think is called like, why I don't eat any greens. It's got like 100,000 views or something. And yeah, I was living in Thailand for about two and a half years or so. And in Thailand, when you go to the farmer's market, you see all this beautiful fruit, all the dragon fruit and mangoes and bananas and everything looks so vibrant. And then you look at the greens and they're just so wilted and gross and like weak and pathetic. So you're like, I don't want greens. I don't want greens. I was just wanting fruit all the time. So I ate fruit, nothing but fruit and coconuts for like two plus years. And it felt, it felt great. I was 130 pounds though. And how old were you then? Uh, so at that age, I was 24. And would you say that like you think people that are younger that are getting into this, are, their bodies are more resilient than maybe when you get a bit more wiser and older in your years? More resilient? Uh, well, young kids, I mean... You can eat it. I mean, they eat McDonald's and still like, young really kids do pretty good. Yeah, I mean, young kids can get away with eating anything, for sure. Like when I was growing up as a teenager, like I didn't have any like symptoms of ill health that I knew of besides constipation or something. Uh, and I ate absolute crap. So eating the fruit diet, I'd say, is much better than absolutely eating crap. I, and I felt great. My performance was great, and all I cared about was performance. It was purely mm. how fast can I run, how fast can I swim, how fast can I bike, mm. and can I keep getting faster? Because mm. I was racing triathlon, and so I was winning these races. I was yeah. getting faster every single freaking week. I'd clock it on my watch, and I was feeling great. I was eating great, and I was watching all these YouTubers like uh, Doreen Ryder and Freely at the time, who were just recommending, yeah, more fruit, more fruit, more fruit. Doug Graham, um, Robert Lockhart. You know, Ann Osborne, and uh, they were like my idols and my inspirations, right? Even Dan the Man, Dan McDonald. You, John Kohler. <laughs> uh, well, I so, ate high fruit back then, yeah, but not all fruit. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, fruit must be the way to go. And uh, I just ate it for, for two and a half years, and then something very interesting happened. And I don't think, and people are going to take this out of context, but here's what happened. I was on one of those hoverboards, you know those things you stand on? Yeah, with the two wheels yeah. and they kind of auto yeah, yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I hopped on one of those, I thought it was cool because I was like into skateboarding, and I was like spinning on the 360s, and I decided I'm going to hop off. You're not supposed to hop off one of these, you're supposed to just like step off. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to hop off. Because it still wants to move in the direction, and, all, and so you probably took a major dump. I, yeah, major dump, and I landed all 130 pounds of me on my thumb. Ooh. Ooh, even just doing that example fucking hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that was painful, and I just went like that right now. Okay, so imagine actually all 130 pounds landed on my thumb. It fucking broke. My thumb broke, and I had to go to the hospital and get a... In Thailand. Um, yeah, to put it in the cast and shit. Um, and as soon as I left the hospital, all I wanted was greens. Whoa, rebuild like, minerals, because maybe you're greens. not mineralized. I don't know what it was. I, it might have been a coincidence. I doubt it. Probably body wanted something. And it was very in tune with my body. And all I wanted was coconut and fruit. And I broke Previously. my thumb. Previously. Yep. I broke my thumb that same day. I was like, I just want some greens. Wow. So I was, I was like, oh, I went to the uh, store that day, bought a bunch of greens, had a big salad. And ever since then, I've reincorporated some greens into my diet. So you think greens are important? I think that you need to get good quality greens. You can't be eating shit quality greens. I, I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, like your garden today. We feasted Yeah, so we was, he came into my garden Incredible. and like, dude, how are the greens? In? Okay, so I asked oh. him this question in the garden. Ted, would you rather eat shit quality fruit, like conventional, pick too ripe, or like my high quality greens, dude? Yeah, high quality greens. Dude. 100%. People don't Impression. understand, like, yeah, shit quality greens or shit quality fruit. That's a tough one. Neither. Nah. <laughs> Go somewhere where you can get high quality fruit yeah, and yeah, greens. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. Grow your own. <laughs> yeah. So, um, after that, I started incorporating some greens. I still have never been a big veggie guy. But greens are like, I love, I love greens. Uh, lettuce, spinach, uh, bok choy. I'm not a big kale guy. Uh, he doesn't like go to coal either. Don't feed him that. Okay, <laughs> I spat out a couple things in his garden. Spat them out. But, um, oh, katuk is amazing. Yeah, What was amazing. that other slimy thing you gave me? Oh, you love that. So that's um, bele. So it's from the South Pacific. Also, egg hibiscus manuhot. So it's a type of edible hibiscus. Yeah. Incredible. Highly recommend. That that's yeah. It grows really wonderful in the summertime. It's struggling a bit now in the colder weather. So so now like my in my mind like the optimal diet at least for me and everyone's different. Yep. Is fruit based with some leafy greens. And so what about vegetables like root vegetables or other vegetables? If they're juiced, I feel good on them. But you don't like to eat them whole. If they're cooked, I eat them whole. Mm. But I don't want them raw. 
I'm not, wow. I'm not, I'm not gonna eat raw cauliflower unless this drizzles it with a lot of uh, sauce. Or unless okay, you have it freeze dried. Never tried that. Yeah. <laughs> raw cauliflower, I'm not gonna touch that. Um, I feel like raw carrots, I don't want those unless Lisa puts them in a wrap. <laughs> Cabbage, I'm not gonna eat that unless Lisa puts You did them today? In yeah, if it's in a wrap, it's drizzled, it's disguised, I'll have it, but I'm not gonna like go out of my way and buy it ever. Shred it up in a salad with lettuce? Yeah. I mean, dude, I think cabbage, is, cooked, just an, cabbage is just another leafy green to if me. If it's cooked, I'm all for it. Wow, I just, you shred it really fine so it's not like all... If Lissa, Lissa makes it. <laughs> all, but I'm not gonna go out of so my she's talking, way. So she's talking about Lissa and Nate and raw food romance, link down below. Yeah, I mean... My I, private, my private chef. I have a... <laughs> he wishes. Um, <laughs> only... List of private chefs are only one person. It's Nate. <laughs> He's a lucky guy. But anyways, a video down below to where Alyssa makes the wraps with me on the show, and she has an ebook for her wraps. Which, if you're gonna get one raw food ebook, get the wrap book, guys. Seriously, we'll both agree. We had wraps today. They're off the hook, dude. They're yeah. like the, one of the best things, and super healthy too. They don't have like extra fat and. You know, no oil in there, no salt or none of this kind of stuff. Absolutely and it's just super healthy. Basically, just it's, it, they call it hand salad because is everything you put in a salad just in a wrap and then you just you could travel with them. Makes it easy. They ha all have bomb dressings in the book. You just put that. We had the dill dressing today. It's like oh, it's so good. Dude, when I first used the iPod, I was a very early user of the iPod, <laughs> and I was like, this is gonna change the music industry forever. When I had this as wrap today. I was like, this is gonna change the raw food movement forever. Dude, everybody needs to get on the wraps. Like right, seriously, nuts. you gotta dehydrate because them yourself. The alternative is, yeah, you just fill up a lettuce, lettuce, yeah, leaf with a bunch of stuff and right. it's all messy and shit. Or you buy some like coconut. And it's and not quite as good either. Yeah. I mean, because like it really tastes like a kind of like a tortilla shell and even has that texture and the chewiness and it's mm -hmm. just like it's so good. You guys gotta try it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back to our story. So unless yeah. Lissa, you know, ma makes something for you, yeah. you'll, you otherwise you won't yeah, eat and I'm like that raw with, vegetables. And I'm like that with a lot of food. And I think you might be too. Like you're not going to go out of your way to like eat a certain thing, but if someone makes it for you, you might have it, right? Oh, uh, like so like... Like, like chocolate. I'm not going to go buy chocolate, but you made some chocolate. Yeah, it's rare chocolate. that I... Yeah, I mean, I don't make chocolate. I mean, I'll eat chocolate I have ready to go in the house, like healthy chocolate, but I won't necessarily buy it. There's rare instances I will. But like this is one thing like... I won't sprout my own like bean sprouts and stuff, but if I go to like Hippocrates and it's on their salad bar, and I'll, I'll absolutely eat it, yeah, you yeah. know? Cause it's like, I'm not gonna do that, but I mean, I eat all kinds of vegetables. And like what I've learned over the years is that vegetables will affect you differently depending on how they're processed. So if you eat them raw, they may benefit you one way. If you eat them cooked, they may benefit you a different way. If you juice them, they're gonna benefit you a different way. And if you even freeze dry them, it's gonna benefit you differently because each way breaks down and makes more nu nutrients bioavailable or different fibers bioavailable for our microbiome and for us to digest. And I'm not the one to say, oh, do this because you're gonna digest it the best. I don't know what way you're gonna digest it the best. I encourage you to try them all out to see which way you like them. I definitely, I definitely appreciate that you will cook your vegetables at least. So. So let's talk about that. So you're not all raw anymore, man, because you used to be hardcore, like raw is the way you gotta eat 100% of your freaking toast. Yeah. What's up, dude? Yeah, just yeah, eating. yeah. And then I know you went on, what, cook food binges maybe for a little bit, because oh, yeah. you just rebelled because you're doing too hardcore fruit only, and I think people may get deficient, and, and then they just go crazy, and luckily you didn't go back to me, because I know you have hardcore oh. veganism ideals. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's foundational piece to this whole thing. It's like, at the end of the day, I'm only eating the way I'm eating it. Like, for the animals, at the end of the day. Like, that's as, as low as I would go would be like, uh, junk food vegan, you know? I wouldn't even go that below. Well, I would never do junk food well, vegan. Well, I, I wouldn't go below to, I wouldn't <laughs> go lower than that. That's what I'm saying, that's like rock bottom. So you'd never do any animal products? No, unless. What about unless, a supplement for like bodybuilding that you can't get from a plant? I don't know, trace amounts of milk in there. No. No. I, th this might be controversial. I'm curious your thoughts on this. I probably would eat animal, an animal if I was driving and a deer came out and I smoked it with my car. See, I, if, I hit it with the, if I kill the deer, I still wouldn't eat it. I might take it and then feed it to my dog or something, but like... Why wouldn't you eat it? I'm just not attracted to meat, dude. Like, so I, I, just, I, say, I, couldn't... I say, I say right now, that I would, but come time of me hitting a deer, 
Would I actually? I don't know. But that would be like the one exception to the okay, I'm gonna eat some meat. I mean, there's a way that I would eat meat if, if it like if it was the end of the world and there was no plants and I was gonna starve. Yeah. I'd eat meat, absolutely. But like, I, if I hit a deer and there's still plant foods, I'm not gonna eat a deer. Although I might. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, if it, you if, might. If I eat might. no, if I was you gonna say, if, no, if I said anything, if I might, if I was gonna eat anything, I might eat fish. Why? Because you're gonna hit a fish by accident. I know. So you I mean, in a boat and you hit the fish. <laughs> a fish jumps out of the fish tank in front of me and then totally croaks in front of me. I might because I mean, studies show that fish is the healthiest. You know, study schmutties, man. <laughs> yeah, study schmutties. And also, too, omega-3s, a lot of people that may be eating only fruit may not have enough omega-3s because they're not eating flax. And even if you are eating flax, maybe your body's not converting it enough. And, you know, I believe that if you don't have enough omega-3, especially as you get older, it's not a big problem when you're younger, you know, maybe your brain facilities won't be there and you're going to be forgetful and all these other th bad things are going to happen to your brain, which is, I, the brain is the thing I don't want to lose the most. Yeah, you brought up a really good point today on our height, which is like, it's never... Like, ill health symptoms, it's rarely or never, like, just, like, one thing, right? Like, for example, like, the dementia thing, right? It could be, like, yeah. okay, you have, like, um... It's a combination yeah, of things. Yeah, a whole bunch It's, of like, things. EPA, DHA, you know, you're not eating enough antioxidants, it's not, you're not, you're too stressed out, you're not it could exercising. Be like fluoride. You're not med, med, yeah, you have fluoride. Bunch of shit. Yeah, dude. It could run in your family, you could be just, yeah. Could be a gene thing. You could be smoking a lot of weed all the time. But I mean, they do have books. There's Dr. You know, uh, Schur's eyes. They have books on like how to prevent Alzheimer's through obviously plant-based diet. But it's not just eating plants. It's eating right. very specific plants that they've seen in their research because that's what they you know do. Yeah, and then you look at the effect of exercise on. Well, yeah, and that exercise is very important. And also, sleep. Of the course, effect of I mean, sleep on. So it's like it's. It, there's so many things you can't just yeah, say it's just one thing. But everyone loves to do that because it sells. But. The other thing is, I've had a lot of, you know, I, I know plant-based doctors that have seen a lot of people on a raw food diet that have had issues with dementia in their older years. If you trust that person, which, which I would say I trust them. But. So, I mean, I don't know. But then everybody gets to choose what they want to do with their life. And they could, if they think that fruit's going to give them the ultimate health, then good guys, do it. Like, I personally would not put all my faith in fruit at this point in my life. Like fruit's great. I love fruit. I have tons of really good quality but fruit. But the bulk of your calories, doesn't it come from fruit? So no, I mean, I make videos, Ted, where I have my bulk of my calories come from vegetables. Raw or cooked? So it used to be raw because when it was raw, I did lots of juicing. How do you more... get the mass, like mathematically speaking, how do you get the most calories, majority of the calories from raw veggies? Juice them. And so, like, root veggies have more How many calories. Calor oh, like carrot juice or something. Yeah, dude, carrot juice. That's dude, that's you that's do, like, a, a root okay. juice, like beets, carrots, and other hearty vegetables that are, like, more starchy have more calories than greens. I mean, but every course, day course, I course. eat, like, I drink a quart of green juice. Uh -huh. Some, like, today's green juice had a lot of cucumbers in it, so, so it's more calorically calorie, dense. Right? Yeah. But it's still calorically dense. Dude, it's four pounds Cucumber of... Cucumber juice? Well... Depends what you mean a calorically dense. It's four pounds of basically vegetables to go to make one quart of juice. So that could be 400 calories. But the cup I had was like 100. Well, you, yeah, you had a small one. I mean, I have a I big one, you know. I don't want to like overload you guys with too much green juice and you puke or something. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so like I do two juices, like one, a 400 calorie juice, 400 calorie juice, or maybe the carrot juice is 500, maybe just guessing, maybe... One juice is three and this is four. Right. 700 calories, right? So Boom. you prefer to spend... Um, time juicing. Time juicing than just eating some fruit. Also, too, like over the years, dude, I've seen my blood sugar. Like my blood sugar has always been not maybe the best as a raw vegan. Oh, how do you measure that? Fruit. You do the uh, diabetes thing? No, so you do like A1C blood testing. So it's like that's like your long-term, you know, blood sugar status. You have to measure that every few months? I mean, whenever, yeah, whenever. I measure it like once a year. Oh. And then also too how I feel, like sometimes I'll just pound fruit and then I would just totally get tired afterwards. I think I'm getting a blood sugar that. hit. I've never experienced that. And then, yeah. Is I that want, certain people? Everybody's different, dude. Yeah. So like, the, there's so many, once again, there's so many reasons why that could happen. But once again, if I just want to listen to dogma, fruit's the best, eat more fruit. For me, I didn't feel the best that's on eating all fruit like people that's, are, that's are supposed very, to feel. So then it's yeah. like, should I just continue doing it even though I don't feel good doing it right. because everybody else is? 
That's, but for my, for me and my immune yeah. system, for my microbiome, it's not dealing with fruit as well as maybe I should be. Yeah. And then when I started doing more vegetables, you know, first at raw, nowadays I'll just heat process them. So today you guys actually saw what I ate. I had like, like what, two, a, a big smoothie, a wrap, a green juice, and then I went home and I had like cooked purple rice, steamed, no, that was that was boiled, and then steamed veggies. Just like a quarter, another quarter. That's why you're so eager to leave. You want to go home and eat cooked food? No, dude. <laughs> and then I had some, I didn't need to, I don't need to eat cooked food, but that's what I had prepared in my fridge and I had to get back down here to film. Why do you call it heat process, not cook? So, so a lot of raw foodists think that if you say, if you say the word cooked food, like a lot of, you know, back in the day when I got into it, I mean, you, you know David, yeah, yeah, David Wolf, you know, cook, all cooked food is poison. I read that book, dude, Nature's First Law. Yeah, dude, and that was plagiarized, of course. Right? And How they was get away with that? Dude, it's because a dude was from a foreign country and like, and then n nobody ever, I mean, nobody, I mean, even to this day, not many people know, whatever, man. It's all old news and shit for the old timers. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so a lot of raw food has learned that cooked food is poison because we always got to make out the bad guy to be yeah, this yeah, one yeah. thing. Yeah. This thing is the bad guy, so yeah. then you need to do this. And like, life is, I wish life was that simple, Ted, that I could just say, don't do that, do this. But what, as I've learned and looking up science, like life is so nuanced and there's all these little things that are just like, you, it's not always this or that. It's always, it's, it's always so different, man. There's many factors. Yeah. Exactly, man. So like, so like I say heat process, because if, you, if I say cook, then, oh, bad, that's bad. That's good, that's good, that's good. But if I say heat process, because once again, blending is a process. Yeah. Dehydration is a process. Those have to be raw approved. Cooking is not. But if I heat process it, it's just another way to process it. And the way I heat process is a lot different than how most people like eat cooked stuff. foods. I don't bake. My stove is still disconnected as a raw vegan. I only use an instant pot to cook. If I can't cook it in instant pot, I'm not eating it. Pressure cooker? Pressure cooker. Gotcha, gotcha. So I could do it at a low, at a higher, a little bit higher temperature for a shorter time and retain more nutrition. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, we, you know, we covered some good stuff during the hike today. Beautiful hike, by the way. Uh, one of the things that I was talking about is like, what do you want to optimize for? In life? Yeah, we were talking about that. Do you want to optimize yeah. for longevity or, or like before you're doing it for performance, like yeah. solely for performance? Fruit is kicking ass for performance, but then yeah. how is that going to affect your long term longevity and, and yeah. the immune system and your microbiome, which is a big part of your immune system, if you care about these things. Yeah, and, and you might be optimizing for being really thin or maybe optimizing for being really big, like right. you're making, you know, become a sumo yeah. wrestler. Like, what do you, what are your, what's your goal? Everybody has different goals and like yeah. in the raw food movement, it seems like you just gotta do this because this gets you everything, yeah. but that doesn't get you everything. So, so, so there's that huge factor at place. Like, what are you optimizing for? That's very, very important. Yeah. Anyone ask you got to know your goal. Yep. People ask me, Ted, like, how do we do the raw food diet? And before I even talk about food, I'm like, what do you want to do exactly. with Exactly. What do you want to do? And how can, how, then how can you use the diet to help you do that? Mm. But the second thing that I was mentioning was like, like I was optimizing for performance, right? Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned that like, you didn't feel your best on fruit, right? Right. So it's like, well, for a, well, at a, certain, at a certain age. Certain age. So, so for so many years, it totally worked great. Yeah. Until it didn't. And then, and then there's other people who will like do a lot of blood tests or like microbiome tests, right? And they, they base it off the scores that they get on paper, right? So it's like, those are like three ways of measuring. Like, how's your performance? How do you feel? And what do the tests show? Exactly. Those are some, like, those are three beautiful Important ways, ways to incorporate all three of them and then make yeah, a decision because, based on because, all the data versus, oh, I feel great, so I'm yeah, not going to do it. Because you could feel great. But your performance sucks. An easy way to do that is just like, yeah, maybe just drink juice for three days. Like, I feel incredible. I'm so light, but I can't even run around the fucking block. You can't, <laughs> even, can't even do a pull-up anymore. You're so weak. And I see that happens all the time. These vegans, they go on raw and they do all these cleanses and they become so weak and like looking very malnourished. And like, oh, I'm cleaning, I'm cleansing, I'm detoxing. But they can't perform. They have no performance. They have no fitness. They've lost all their fitness. And then they don't want to get back into fitness because they're like, I'm not done detoxing yet. Right? It's like no performance. I've always taken the approach of like, I want to feel fucking amazing. I want to perform amazing. I want to look amazing. And the tests on paper. You want to prove better, it by the test. The test better, better reflect that. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect, man. So, That's awesome. See, this is what I appreciate about Ted because most people just, oh, I feel good. I'm not going to change. They don't, they, don't, they don't actively check to make sure 
their performance is good or even do like blood tests because like oh doctor don't go to the doctor's office that's all bad yeah yeah no i love tobacco with that um i'm curious what do you what would you like if i was to go get a blood test tomorrow what would be the blood test you recommend i get so I have a video where I have like how to get in the U.S. anyway. It's five dollar blood test. Can I do that one in, in Vegas? Yes, absolutely. Can you can do it today. You better do it right now. As a Canadian, I'm pretty sure you can. They don't require a social security number or anything. Like, like seven thirty nine. We could sign up and maybe you could get the paperwork tomorrow. And you got to go tomorrow and get it done. Heck yeah! You could, I'll totally show you how to do it. Yeah, let's do it. Anyways, but yeah, so there's a bunch of tests. Well, I mean, it's it would be too much to go in so the video. So that blood test one, the microbiome test is another. Yes. Cool. I mean, I think those are two essential tests. I mean, cool. blood tests will kind of show what you are to make sure you're not deficient in, like, especially vitamin D, B12, homocysteine. That's not too high. You're going to mess up your heart health, your A1C. You could check different inflammation markers. Another good one we talked about was HRV. Yeah. Yeah. We took HRV. Heart, that, well, that's a different test. Yeah. yeah but like the aura ring or your sleep band or whatever. Yeah. Test those out, test your, you measure your sleep's not blood. And I mean, of course, you've measured your fat percentage because, I mean, Ted's getting famous these days for being a bodybuilder. I mean, I'm, I'm going to call him the raw vegan Tom Cruise. Look at this guy, man. <laughs> He's like, look at this. He's built, man. <laughs> I just watched um, Eyes Wide Shut the other day. Oh, that's a good movie. I love that. <laughs> Did you know the director, Stanley Kubrick, died four days after the film got released? I didn't know that. That's crazy. If you know what the movie's about, do some research. <laughs> the video might get flagged down. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, people say I look like Tom Cruise a lot. I got that in my last video. It's just like the hair and like you got the nose and, uh, the nose. and then also you see you're pretty built now. And so tell us about that, man. Building muscles on fruit with some leafy greens. <laughs> yeah. And did you eat cooked food too? Yeah. Yeah. So my diet. Yeah. What is your diet now? Yeah, so yeah, let's, so let's that. talk that and then we'll talk fitness. Uh, Diet now, there's typically three, I have three types of days that I'll have. Some days is all raw, and that's pretty much just fruit and some greens. Some days there's no even greens, it's just all fruit. Um, depending on what I can get, where I am. But that's like my favorite days, fully raw. And fruit based. And then the second type of day is um, where I'll go big fruit, I have two meals a day. So yeah, you're doing Always intermittent fasting, up. right? Yeah, intermittent fasting. It doesn't even feel like it anymore, but I guess it is. I normally eat around noon, first meal, second meal around 3 or 4 p.m. And you could crank in enough calories. Yeah, I eat about 2,500 2, max. In, in two meals. Yeah, max 25. That's calories. difficult. I, I was trying to do that, and it's, I can't, I gotta do three. Yeah. Well, because I, I eat so many, I mean, especially if you're doing vegetables and you're trying to cram yeah, all the Yeah, you have way more volume than me. Because, yeah, the fruit's higher caloric density. Yeah, so for, first type of day, ideally, is like just fruit. Second type of day is raw, but fruit for the first meal. And then the second meal is like a big salad with uh, avocado on top. And tender greens. Just, yeah, just yeah, greens. salad of greens with big Like of lettuce avocado. and kale, what greens do you no like? No kale, spinach. lettuce and spinach. Oh, no, you don't do cruciferous. They're poisonous. No, I just don't like <laughs> them that much. How about, how about the cruciferous you had in my garden today? How was that, man? I like the bok choy a lot. Would you, like, you had uh, Kamatsuna, was it, or the Mizuna? The Mizuna was... That was a red one that you said, that this was, is too That was a eat. red one, I was like, this looks completely inedible, but I'll eat it anyway. How was that? Did you hate nice. it? Like, no, it was decent. It's, it felt a little bit firm, but... Or I, like, I, I was gravitating towards lettuce and spinach. That's what I was like. Or you had the Napa cabbage, then you, you thought that was lettuce, man. You could get no, tricks. Na yeah, Napa cabbage. Wasn't that uh, good? Didn't you like that? Could you add that to your salad? Yeah, you had high it, quality. It, it wasn't like cabbage -y. It was super like baby. It was I like know. Baby, yeah. When you grow your own garden, you could pick all the baby stuff and yeah, say, get yeah, the yeah. stupid mature I like shit. the baby. Oh, and arugula. I love arugula. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, definitely throw that in. So if I got lettuce, so that's lettuce, spinach, arugula, and whatever John wants to give me. <laughs> Put some avocado so on it's top. from my garden, if it, except go to cola, you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no go to cola, it's nasty. Shit. And then the third type of day I'll have is breakfast again is going to be fully raw, fruit. And then the second meal slash last meal is going to be something like a bowl of quinoa or a bowl of buckwheat with some guacamole on top. Oh wow, no, vet and you, so you don't cook vegetables. It's just like a grain bowl, basically. I might cook up some red pepper, which is a fruit. I might also cook up... Um, some carrots and put those on top, sliced up. Yeah, but never like... Maybe some corn. So, but never like sweet potatoes or potatoes or like yuca or cassava or any kind of potatoes. more hearty, starchy tubers? No, I would do maybe some sweet potatoes occasionally. Some yams or sweet potatoes. But I use the Instant Pot as well. I'm so used to going like... It's one so scoop easy, buckwheat, dude. One scoop 
quinoa, boom, boom, done. And then would you cook it in coke? I cook mine in coconut water. I learned to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I do it all the time. I do it every single time. I won't yeah. cook it. If, I, if I can get some coconut water, then well, that's my, if I'm cooking like my oatmeal or buckwheat, or you should get the tartane buckwheat, dude, the Himalayan buckwheat. Okay. It's the next level. Cool. High antioxidant. <laughs> cool. So yeah, those are the three types of days I'll have. That's diet, diet related. So the first day is all fruit or fruit with gluten yeah. still? I do, no, just fruit. So you still do fruit days yeah, yeah, some yeah. days. What percentage of only fruit days do you do? Mm, depends where I am. Dep right. Depends where I am, depends the season. Uh, when I'm in Mexico, like recently, I was doing maybe a couple a week. There's a period where I was doing like, yeah, three, four a week or something. So maybe sometimes half, half sometimes half of the week you're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. only fruit days. Wow, still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but really simple. Two two big meals a day. A fruit. Yeah. Wow. We get really good and stuff. From do you myself. have like a lot of variety, or just like you mono this and mono that? It and... also depends. Ideally, I mono if I get access to really really good mm. stuff. But as you know, it's hard to get access to really really good stuff, especially when you're in a new place. But um, yeah, I'll do like throughout the day. I'll have like mame, pineapple, papaya, mango, banana, berries. That's oh, so a bunch. Yeah, a bunch of different varieties. And, and tell us like, about like sometimes you do like coconut date. Like smoothies? Yeah, so I'll just take coconut water, put it in the blender. Is that one of the meals or is that just a snack? That's a meal, dude, for sure. Super, super dense. When I, when I blend up dates, I make sure the dates are soaked the night before in water. And then um, I blend up the soaked dates with coconut water and I call it now, Datorade. Is that just like drinking sugar water? Like I would, personally, I would never oh, do that, man. I know it probably tastes hella good. It's so good. And you can add some chocolate mint to it, <laughs> which is a vegetable. <laughs> Some chocolate mint leaves. Oh, it's incredible. Highly recommend. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite dinners, raw dinners. Highly got to get this. It's like on par with like the best raw meals I've ever had. Zucchini noodles, right? Peeled, which is a fruit. And then you cut them so they're not so fucking long. So zucchini noodle base. And then you blend up persimmons, like the ones you gave me. So good. With dates and basil. Wow, so it's like a sweet dressing. That's crazy. I've never yeah, done that. Wow. I've always done savory dressings. It's incredible. Well, I got a lot of persimmons this time of year, so Dude, I just should zucchini, do it. I know you got zucchini too. So. I got zucchini, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's like my favorite raw food meal. Wow. Yeah. So that's still real. That's like raw basically, food. yeah. Fruit, well, the basil. Well, basil. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things I think about in the raw food movement is that old habits die hard, right? So to try to modify what your beliefs are when you're young and get into it, it kind of like to change, even to just, for me to start eating heat processed food, you know, it took years for me to finally like, okay man, you just gotta do it, because I was always thinking about it, like, it could be better, Yeah, I'm not like, sure. You're eating it now for health benefits, right? I'm eating it only for health yeah. benefits, not for the calories, I, because... Yeah, I'm doing it purely for convenience. Ah. Uh, I'm truly under the impression that we don't need it, but I know uh, you really feel like we do need it, and you're adamant about it, I love that. But so, dude, I, I really want you to get meetings. your microbiome checked, yeah, man. Yeah, Because then we can see. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah, what you're do doing it. is optimal, and then you don't have to do. For sure. You don't have to change nothing. And that's and that's that's what I do with the protein talk, right? Everyone's like, you need protein, you need protein, you need protein, no protein. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll go do the test at the gym, and I get stronger without it. So fuck you, you know. <laughs> but it's like with the microbiome, yeah. It's like if I can get tested now. If you're my, like 90 or 100, yeah. man, you're already kicking ass. Like, dude, don't change. Exactly. So I but, need to get the test. But we don't know that. But then that's only your microbiome. But then, you know, how else are your like trace mineral stores yeah, and all these other things, man, you know? I would love to. Full panel. <laughs> spend, Full the, panel. We'll spend the five bucks. <laughs> well, the five bucks is just for one basic test and you gotta, I mean, last time I did, I spent 1100 bucks. Okay, let's spend it all. Let's yeah, it. but the videos, you link down below if you guys want to see my eleven hundred dollar blood test. That was a crazy raw vegan. <laughs> after the video, wait for it. Yeah, after the video. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how I eat. And then in terms of the the fitness you were asking, um, my fitness. A lot of when I first got into the raw vegan space, one of the very first documentaries I watched was called the like, Raw Vegan Bodybuilding. And have you seen that? Who was in it? Bunch of Reuters. <laughs> Reuters. Bunch of Reuters. Yeah, a bunch of big <laughs> bodybuilding guys. On roids. Um, and I thought, oh wow, maybe one day I can look like that. So you really want to look like some big ass No, dude? back in the day I was like 125 pounds. Mm -hmm. I've seen these guys like 200 plus pounds. I thought you could look like that naturally. I didn't know. Um, and then I, you know, I was doing cardio triathlon for seven, eight years and I finally quit that. And then I got into like bodybuilding, which I hate that word because that word to me means like you're on steroids. Right. Um, I think the way I train, I train for like aesthetics as opposed to being just big um, 
It's not functional if you're too big, man. You're no, just like, oh, yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. barely move. And I already kind of feel like that sometimes. I see <laughs> pictures and videos of myself, and like, I'm kind of already, like, big enough. I just, I want to be functional. Like, I'm told you, I'm going to race Grant next right. week in, in Mexico. I want to still be able to run fast and um, perform, not just purely look a certain way. So, the way I train now is, yeah, I just train three, three times a week. And how long? Work out to 30 to 40 minutes. That's max. crazy that you get like, you know, you, it just, once again, it's about commitment and people don't have commitment these days. You are not consistent. They don't stay with it right. for very long. Yeah. And uh, I, I always wonder why that is. And I think it just comes down to like, maybe some people, they, they, they don't track progress. So therefore they don't see progress. They don't mm -hmm. get addicted to the progress. Or they just hate the activity. You know, because I know for me, like, even if I don't like an activity and I'm seeing progress, I'll keep doing it. Because I'm like, oh, there's progress. Like, clearing my inbox. I fucking hate cleaning my inbox. I'm like, there's progress, only nine more, only eight more, seven more, let's go. But if I never saw those numbers, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to clear my inbox. I recently cleared my inbox, so I'm speaking from recent experience. Uh, but also, like, when I go to the gym, I love lifting the weights. Like, it feels so damn good. And if I... Is it like a runner's high, but a lifting high? Yeah, I just feel incredible. Pumped. I feel good going to the gym, I feel good at the gym, I feel good leaving the gym. I just love everything about it. Even though I'm only there for like 30, 40 minutes. Um, so the thing I'm like jealous of the steroid guys, not because of how they look, I'm jealous because they can, uh, they can like go and they can spend three hours there and keep going, keep going. I'd be exhausted after an hour. Um, so that's because you don't need no protein? <laughs> Yeah, and I train. Why can't you get? Why can't you stay for three hours if you wanted? Because I train very differently than a lot of people. When I go and I lift, I do like a warm up set, which is like nothing, and then when I do my actual first set, I go like max. Oh, you're max now versus going for like number of reps. Yeah, not number of sets. I I did do one set per exercise. Max the f out on that first set, and then I'm and like my nervous out, system yeah. is like shot, and then I try to have that same level of intensity. Five, ten minutes later on another exercise, and then I'm like double Ooh, shot. And then by the time I'm done my third exercise, I'm ready to go. So, um, it's very different than how I used to train. I used to train like, oh, like I do like three sets of 12 and basic shit, not really measure any progress. But now I go there and I treat it, I treat my workouts like a bank robbery. I go in there, I try to get the personal record and get out. So, so what, mo measuring and what motivates you to work out in this fashion versus the old way? This? Like, what have you noticed? Yeah. And what's the goal for working out for you? This, I've now gamified it. Because now I'm like, hey, dude, last week we did, and this is a true story, last week I did five and a half reps on a 185 pound bench. Yesterday I went with Alyssa, I did seven reps. I'm like, yeah! It's the strongest I've ever been at this current weight. Mm. And so to me, I'm like, boom! What do you weigh now? 155 pounds. Wow. Yeah. So I'm doing 150, I'm 155 and I was lifting 185 for seven reps. But my goal is 12 and I'm, I'm going to get to 12. And then what's the next goal after that, after you achieve it? Two plates for 12, which is 225. <laughs> I see. Yeah. But, but again, like some bodybuilders, they just care about strength. I want to be able to lift 185 pounds on bench for 12 reps and be able to run a sub 20 minute 5K the same day mm. and be able to do 25 pull ups the same day. You know, so it's like I want to be very well rounded. Right. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. And I don't want to have to do it on any stimulants or have to take any drugs for it or any of that shit. So do it naturally. So you think your current diet will get you there or you think you have to modify what you're doing? Oh, diet's perfect. Diet's, I'm constantly improving. Every week I'm getting a little stronger. And that's because I measure it so I can see it. Mm -hmm. So you're really, it sounds like to me you're really focused on like your strength training. And so how does... Does, does health come into the equation? Like for me, like the reason why I do my diet and why I tailor my diet specifically and how I do it, because I'm looking for, you know, health, longevity, and specifically immune boosting. Mm -hmm. Specifically, yeah. like that's my whole goal with what I'm doing. Yeah, I love to see things that are measurable. So we were talking about HRV, right? Mm. And when I was taking a certain supplement, you can mention it if you want. Yeah, go ahead, I don't care. NMN, I was taking NMN, I'm probably gonna get back to taking it again. Mm. He's taking it from Do Not Age. Yeah, yeah. I, made, I was wearing an aura ring for months. And I could see my HRV was a certain level. I forget what it was. And then I started taking NMN for months. And right when I started taking it, my HRV level changed for the better. And it remained very, very good the whole time I was taking NMN. And then since I started traveling, I haven't taken it. don't have an aura ring anymore. But I'm like, what? Well, I can measure that objectively, right? And see that it's actually doing something. It. Yeah. And when you talk about like boosting immune system, to me that just means like... Don't get sick. Measure how many times you get sick, you know? 
Yeah, but I mean, you're so like the better your microbiome, the better your immune system is going to be. Yeah, but how do you measure your immune system? It's like typically, it's like, well, are you sick or are you not? Well, I mean, there's markers in your bloodstream, so you could see like different, I don't know, immune markers. So you're not measuring basically. your blood more than a couple times a year. Right? No, like once or twice exactly. a year. If that. So typically, you measure that by like, am I sick or not? Um, and so when you to even health, like, how do you measure health? Right, there's so many metrics for yeah, health. Yeah, that's true. So it's like I like to be specific. It's like, hey, how's my sleep? How's my HRV? How's my, how's my performance? How's my mood? Mm. How's my stress level? Am I like having anxiety? Is like trending these days? It's fucking crazy. People are like having anxiety attacks all over the place. That never was a thing when I was growing up. Nobody had anxiety attacks. Yeah, I mean, up. with all these different jabs that people are getting, who knows what the hell that's doing? Yeah, <laughs> and maybe social media too is a Yeah, that. right. And Shorter attention spans, and then, yeah. like you said, combination of a bunch of things is creating yeah, and, this. And, it, and yeah, and also this is crazy too. It's like growing up, there was no such thing as like kids or people having anxiety or even like depression back when I was growing up. But now, because other people are having anxiety, uh, and other people are experiencing, you know, depression all that stuff. It's like, oh well, she is, and you he see is, your, so you see what you emulate. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, I'm also having anxiety. I'm also mm. having depression. It's like. Never. But the world's getting way more crazy than it ever has been. Yeah. Like just politics everywhere. Entropy, just, dude. A lot of entropy. Things, man. I really I watched a recent doc. Uh, watched a YouTube video recently about entropy and how like everything like gets more and more crazy as time goes on. Everything like starts to break down, and we can't can't prevent it. Entropy is just part of the universe. And it, yeah, if you consider the law of entropy, and how that's like affecting like our society today, it's like whoa. Society is just getting fucked because of entropy. It's just a law of the universe. Nothing we can do about it. We can try to slow it down, like aging, right? We're breaking down, breaking down. We're gonna eventually get so old and decrepit that we die. Entropy. Everything breaks down. This pillow will one day not exist. Entropy. <laughs> Can't prevent it. Um, the only thing that's gonna uh, really not experience, experience entropy is probably Bitcoin. <laughs> we won't talk about Bitcoin on my channel, but so Ted, I want to want to dial it back here. So I was thinking of some questions to ask you before this, and I was like, "What's one thing that, or what's three things that when you're new into raw foods, you know, maybe in the because I know you've been doing it for 14 years now, maybe in the first three years that you thought was totally true, and now you look back and you're like, man, I was a dumbass." Three things. Okay, I don't know about three, but I'll give you something. Come, I'll try to give you three. Yeah, sure. First one comes to mind is other animals in nature don't brush their teeth. So <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. Right? Because I learned that too, and I jacked up my teeth. Oh, yeah. It's like, well, why would I brush my teeth? That makes sense. I'm eating nature's food. Other animals eat their nature's food. They don't brush their nature teeth. Nature fallacy. So, yeah. Um, that was a big mistake. A lot of people make that mistake. Um, second one is thinking I need protein. Mm. And a lot of protein and extra protein, so I do a bunch of powders and stuff, and terrible digestion all the time because of that. And I guess the third one is the third one beliefs I used to have, right? Yeah, or things that you thought were true that, that oh, you find out um, is not true, like cooked food is poison. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I thought cooked food is poison for sure. Um, most of it still is. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Most of it but still probably is. Probably the third one is like um, organic is always better. Mm. Organic is always better, which is definitely not the case. And some stuff is just not labeled organic, but it truly is organic. Yeah, I mean, I think. Great. Yeah, I mean, I think that it just like a lot of things, Ted. Like it just depends, really. Mm -hmm. How was it grown? What was sprayed on it? You could have I like the stuff in my garden. You tasted today. That's not certified organic, but yeah. my quality is h higher than organic, better than organic standards. Like none of the plants that you ate today were sprayed with anything except water, nothing, mm -hmm. but no pesticides. Yeah, incredible. So those are three quick ones, I guess. Wow. So the next question is what would you do differently looking back on, you know, when you're a noob, would you still go through the two years of all fruit thinking like it's the best for you? Or would you start to eat more vegetables or would you want to eat more vegetables? Do you think vegetables are even important? What would I do differently? Well, I would, uh... Would you start by juice fasting oh, oh, for 40 oh, days? Oh, no. <laughs> I would take those three things that, oh yeah, I guess that was another belief. I thought I should do a 40-day water fast. Really? 
Yeah, it was like the it was like peak pinnacle. pinnacle. Yeah, it's like if I don't do a 40 day water fast, I'm not like a true OG. You know? <laughs> like Luke Corona's done two 40 day water fasts, I should at least do one. So I was like like training and preparing to do like a 40 day at one point. But you never did? No, I think most of it was like eight days or something. I did like seven once a long time ago. Yeah. Um, so the question was, what would I do differently? Right. I probably wouldn't think that I needed to fast. I wouldn't have done as many juice cleanses as I did. That those are such a waste. It was such a waste for me. I know a lot of people like love them and they're like yeah, they're fucking amazing, and it may be for you, but for me. It's what was your experience on your juice fasts, man? Liquid diarrhea, burning asshole. Really? So they really like, juice did not agree with you. No, I just. But some people say ass. juicing works for everybody. I mean, I sell juicers, so. I love juice. It's but like juice, one of my juice fasting does not so. work for everybody. For yeah, work no. for you, anyway. If I could have like two big fat jars a day of juice, I'd be a happy man. And then eat plenty of fruit with yeah, it. Yeah, plenty yeah. of fruit yeah, with it. I'd agree with that, man. I eat fruit, I drink juice, I eat salads, I eat, eat processed vegetables. Yeah, but I thought I needed to do that to cleanse and, and get rid of like these toxins that had like built up over my first 18 years of life. And who's, who knows, maybe I did need to do that, I don't know, but looking back, I highly doubt it. Um, so then I wouldn't have put myself through that, like thinking I need, I was like stressing, like, oh, I gotta do So you that. had like diarrhea every day you were juicing? I did 22 days on just coconut water. Oh, that would be. I mean, I got, I got, I have got diarrhea because you're, you have too many of certain electrolytes, man, and oh. then you just, your body just releases everything, dude. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't recommend coconut water fast. I did that for like a weekend once, and that. I that did. Was not good. I did, and this is one of those examples of like I did feel incredible, but my performance absolutely tanked. Mm. Like I was so weak, and who knows what my, the, who knows what the paper showed in the test or whatever. But, um, anyways, I probably wouldn't have thought I needed to do these cleanses, and I probably wouldn't have done these cleanses. Uh, I would have brushed my teeth more. Um, I would have. Um, I'm glad I did a lot of what I did. The most important thing we'll talk about this. The most important thing I did, I think, was uh, a lot. I educated myself a lot. I kept watching a lot of YouTube videos. I kept watching. So who did you learn from? That was a question because I mean you could learn yeah, from people variety. that are. You I can learn from variety. people that are teaching you wrong information, and then yeah, you think totally. what they, even what I teach, is like totally right. I mean, it's yeah. right for me, it but, might not be right for you, but who did you yeah. listen to? And who did you, oh, well, like I said at the start, I listened to a variety of people. And, and then what did you do? How did you discern which was the better information? Yeah, well, the first thing anyone naturally will do is like, does it make sense to them what they're hearing? Right. But then um, some stuff I would just test out, and some stuff you just look at the person, and you're like, does I want to look like that person when I'm older? Like that's one way of judging. <laughs> How was their performance? What's the, what are their results? Um, but I just had a plethora of different people that I would watch every day and stay inspired on. And I think a lot of people do the opposite. They watch videos on YouTube of why raw veganism doesn't work or why a vegan diet will fail you and all this stuff. And they're watching videos from like people who eat carnivore diet. And like maybe I should do the carnivore diet after all. It's like I don't watch any of that shit. And then when I finally did watch that stuff, I was like, these arguments are super dumb. Um, but I think, yeah, the best thing I did was just stay educated with a lot of different people who inspired me. And then I, yeah, just, like I said, just focus on my performance and how good I was feeling. Um, and a lot of people don't, they don't have anything, that, they're not into fitness. And so they're not like using the diet for anything, right? They're just like eating the diet to eat the diet. It's like I was eating the diet as a tool to win races, right? Um, and now it's like I eat the diet in the way I eat the diet, yeah, because I want to perform and look good or whatever, but uh, I want to run a business, I want to build an empire, and I need to feel my best, and uh, the way I eat allows me to feel my best so I can build my business empire. Mm. So, but I'm like, I'm using the food as a tool, like you'd use a hammer and a nail. I'm not like holding the hammer and nail, like, oh, beautiful hammer, beautiful nail. I'm like, fuck, let's put it's this It's kind of just use. like the fuel that yeah, you're putting in you to make, make, your, make your body work. Like, we went for that beautiful hike today, it was incredible. What were we fueled by? These beautiful wraps. Yeah. So good. Imagine if we had a fat, ugly burger before that, I wouldn't want uh, to I wouldn't even want to walk, yeah, I wouldn't even want to hike. Yeah, so it's like, it's fuel, let's, let's use it. And so, uh, I'm glad that I had like role models who were into athletics and raw foods mm. at the same time. And I don't know really any role models now who are into raw foods and business. I think like, I'd be one of the only people. Um, but what's interesting now is like I'm having a lot of people come up to me and let the, letting me know that, oh, I'm inspiring them to start their business and be healthy and eating this way. Because most business guys are on coffee and cigarettes and 
Some of the top gurus are like recommending that you eat like nicotine gum and nicotine wow, gum to stay to focused. Wow, keep you amped up. Wow, that's yeah, nice. and and a coffee and a bunch of crap. So, um, yeah, one of the best things I did is just stay inspired by people who inspire me, who had the results I wanted. Um, and I traveled the world. I traveled the tropics. I tried out different places to live. I didn't stay in cold Canada forever, but I made it work in cold Canada. <laughs> yeah. So three tips to make it work in cold Canada being a raw vegan man. And Trip to heat in the cars. house. You guys came over yesterday. Dude, he, we came over yesterday. It was like 83 and I'm like, holy shit, it's so yeah. hot, dude. Because I don't want to be cold. So what do I do? Crank it up. I could have complained. Oh, it's cold. I should have cooked food. No, just fucking crank the heat. <laughs> Trip the heat. That's tip number one. Trip the heat. Tip number two. When you go outside, dress warm. <laughs> if I go outside naked, I'm going to be cold here in Vegas. It's freezing. So what do I do? It's good hormetic stress though, man. Yeah. It's like I, cold I, plunge. I lather up. <laughs> I, I just dress warm. That's tip number two when you go outside. Um, and tip number three is like, if you want to be warm, you can just have hot water and drink hot water like tea or whatever. It's not raw! <laughs> yeah, you can have cooked water. Heat process. Heat process water. <laughs> um, that, that'll instantly warm you up. Or you could just put some stuff in the dehydrator. That, like, we had a, like, a really warm meal the other night at Lissa's house. It was incredible. But what about the food, man? Like, yeah, dehydrate the food. What do you? Warm? No, but what do you eat for food in the winter time, oh, man? Yeah. Can can you even get good? I yeah, mean, well, citrus is, citrus mean. is in season, and persimmons are in season, and dates are always in season, and bananas are always in season, and berries, frozen berries, are always in season. So it's like if you can make those like your staples, and you load up on greens or whatever veggies you want, then you're good. So pretty easy. So let's let's talk about business, Ted, because I mean, uh, if like there's some raw foodists out there that kind of teach business courses, I'm like, ah, don't even go to them. But I'm like, if I if I was gonna recommend somebody, I would totally recommend you as the business raw food guy. And I know some of you guys out there want to like start a business. You don't know how to do business. I mean, dude, Ted's been doing this. I seen Ted when he started, and I've been doing business for many years. And I'm like, man, Ted really researches this stuff, learns from lots of people, takes all the best knowledge, gets it in him, and then shares exactly what you need to know so that you can be successful. But here's the thing. He won't make you do it. He'll teach you everything, and then you got to get off your butt and do it. And if you do that, you will be successful. So Ted, what are some of your, your secrets to like help people that want to stop working to the job they hate just for the money they don't, they need because they got to pay their rent and buy their raw food and stuff? Like, what would you tell people? Yeah, good question. First thing I'd ask them is, what's their income goal? Mm. What's your income goal? It's like, what's your Most raw food goal? Like, why do you eat raw clueless. food goal? Yeah. Most people are clueless. They don't, they, they, they'll say something like, I'm not in it for the money. Or they'll say like, um, I just want a lot of money. They won't pick a number. I'm like, how much money do you want to make per month? Give me a, give me a number. Because like, that's going to define like your, your strategy to yeah, get there. Yeah, that will define a lot of things. And it'll also make you feel something. Like I used to remember thinking like 10 grand a month, like I felt like it was way too much, you know? And then I get to a point where like 10K looks like poverty. So, <laughs> 10K is poverty. It yeah. is. And it's like, yeah, you just get like, the numbers can, you know, when I say the word $10,000 a month, a lot of people in the audience might be like, oh yeah, like that's impossible. Other people might be like, I'm making that now. Yeah. Other people might be like, that is more problem. than that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so pick a number, pick a number. That's my Ask yourself what number you want to go for. That's tip number one. And then tip number two is ask yourself, do you want to be CEO or COO? Mm. Do you want to be a chief operating officer, like operate behind the scenes, like take care of all the back end? Or do you want to be the face of the business? And by the way, the business I help people run typically is a content entrepreneurship businesses and I can't help some sell juicers or shit. <laughs> but um, yeah, so when you say Ted helps people with business, like I help people with a content entrepreneurial business. So explain that to people that have, don't know that term. Yeah. What does that mean? You help them create digital products they could sell? Yeah, typically I help uh, content creators or COOs, like people behind the scenes of a content creator, help them sell more courses, coaching programs, um, memberships, ebooks, digital, digital products. So do you help them make the products too or you just teach them yeah. how to sell it? How to make the product, how to make the offer. So it's not even a product, it's just like an offer or a service that they're providing. So help them craft and build the offer and then help them uh, get the traffic, get the attention, get the eyeballs, and then help them with the actual conversions, like the sales. Mm. Most people's their offers absolutely suck. Most people have no way of getting traffic or they're terrible at getting traffic, and then they do not know how to convert that traffic into actual sales. So tell me about one success story that just comes at the top of your head that like the person you know, went through your program and how much money are they making now, and, and how are they changing the world more importantly? Because to me, my life is not like, how much money can I make? It's like, how can I serve? And, 
what difference can my life yeah. make on the planet? And then I believe that if you serve and help others, you will be rewarded. Yeah, my favorite success story is, oh, we have so many, so many, and they're all so beautiful. Do you, you have testimonials like on your website? Or yeah, yeah, you yeah. I, I have what I call a wall of testimonials. Mm -hmm. So you go to my site, you scroll down, you keep scrolling, you keep scrolling, you keep scrolling, and all you see is testimonials from people who are crushing. But my one of my favorites is this lady who's in her 40s, and she wanted to help other women get fit and, and relieve chronic pain and help them feel more beautiful, help them feel more feminine. But she had no idea how to do it. She, she just knew that she wanted to do it. Was she already vegan, raw, or just ate whatever? Or just... Um, she was raw at one point and then she started eating some meat, I think. But um, at the time of her doing the business, I believe she was eating meat, but she just wanted to help people. Yeah, get healthier. Just yeah, move in the right direction. Yeah, it was movement. It was movement. Help them like open up their spine and mm. things like this. And, um, she knew that she wanted to be CEO, like the face of it. She wanted to take the pictures, do the videos, she was really clear on that. But she did not know how to do any of the tech. Didn't know how to do a website, didn't know how to do calendar, didn't know how to do the calls, didn't know how to do the sales, wow. like nothing. She just wanted to be like, here's how to get results and then have someone take care of the back end. So she's an old friend of mine, we knew each other from like 10 years ago and her son was like 15 at the time. Um, I started mentoring him and teaching him how to do all the back end stuff, how to do all the, the tech and the funnels and the emails and the sales and all that stuff. And she then teamed up with her son and she's like, hey, why don't you take care of all the back end? I'll do the front end and then we can, you know, grow this business together. Wow, cool. So their first few months together, the first few months of doing this, after applying it, like everything to the T, uh, they were doing over 10K a month. Wow. Yeah. And then within six months, she was doing about 50K a month. Wow, that's impressive. And then after a year, she's doing over 100K a month. Wow. And now these results may not be typical. Of course, definitely not. She's like an all star because she's separated herself from the shit she doesn't want to do and doesn't know how to do. Mm. Everyone gets stuck on the shit that they don't know how and don't know what they don't want to do. So I'm saying decide right now. You want to be CEO, CEO or COO? And then, and then plan that. accordingly. 100%. And then accordingly. hire the right people or yeah. learn how to do all that stuff yourself. Yeah. So she kept going. She ended up optimizing the team or the COO, the son optimized the team behind her. So she kept doing her thing. She just did the videos and she just did the coaching calls. That's it. Everything else, the son kept growing, growing, growing behind the scenes for her. And now they're averaging 300K a month. Wow. But Impressive. the best part about this is not the money. The best part about this is when you go to her page and you scroll down, how many lives she's changed and how many Holy people she's gotten fit shit. and healthier. The testimonials are ridiculous. She's helped so many women alleviate chronic pain. She's helped so many women drop like 50 pounds. She's helped so many women like get their sex life back. She's helped women get pregnant. She's helped women have the best orgasms of their life. She's helped women prevent divorces and their marriage. Like she's changing women's lives like crazy. Wow. And, uh, and this is all because you helped her start a business so that she could help more people and we can make the world a better place one person at a time. Yeah, and but the, the key, the key, the key, the key, the key is that she didn't do anything she didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. Delegate session. Delegate, delegate. And I was working with the son, mentoring the son as a CEO, and I was even telling him, I'm like, bro, your job should be to sit in the throne and build the team around you and have them do what you need them to do. Like, you shouldn't be running around like a chicken with your head cut off, because at the start, he was doing everything, and he was stressed out. He was like 16. I'm like, bro, chill out. Just build the team. So now he's like 18, he's got a big team and they're crushing. But you got people gotta delegate, man. They're trying to do everything themselves. Even when I started, I tried to do everything myself. I got so overwhelmed. So I reached out to a friend, Joy B, and Joy B helped me set up my funnel. He helped me set up all the Stripe integrations and the payment and all that stuff. And I couldn't have done it without him. No chance. But I learned to get help and then I've since learned to now to delegate. Now we got 20 people on our team. Wow. It's incredible. Delegate that shit. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it. Yeah, I mean, I'd say you're probably one of the most successful raw people out there in terms of business, mm. for sure. Because most people they try and do it all themselves. Yeah, and then but, the other... but, but even when we were talking today, I was like, dude, you could delegate that, right? And like, yeah, I probably could. I could right? delegate so much because I do everything except my video editing. Yeah. And like, I could probably do way more <laughs> stuff and reach way more people. Probably, but it's it's a whole it's a whole skill to develop. Skill of delegating, a leadership, yeah, and then team dealing with people because that's a yeah. whole new skill set. Like yeah. that's a skill set that I and probably I'm, could improve I'm upon. I'm so blessed 
to be been brought up as a uh, captain on a soccer team. Ah, there you my go. You have the leadership skills already life. built in, man. Yeah, it's felt so second nature. Like, That's yo, cool. like, do this, and yo, do that, and like, we're gonna win together. So, but you gotta, tr like, I was blessed to have been doing that since I was four years old. That's cool. Um, people come into the space, they have no leadership skills, they have no communication skills, it's very hard to get them to, to um, get into that role, but they've got to decide, CEO or COO, and then go from there. So, do you help people figure out, like, say somebody just, I wanna make money, I wanna get out of my job, do you help them figure out what they're passionate about yeah. so that they can start some yes. kind of you know business yeah. and help so other people or yeah what? There's, there's phases to this and the very first phase is getting them clear on the offer getting them clear on the offer when i say clear on the offer i mean getting them in alignment with something that's actually going to sell most people are in alignment with some shit that's never going to sell <laughs> they're like i want to help people uh live the best life ever it's like okay show me who's going to pay you three grand for that <laughs> Or like, I want to help people like learn to um, align their chakras. Well, who's going to pay you three grand for that? You know, it's like people have like the worst offers ever and we see it all the time. So that's the very first thing we help them with. And we help them with that for free. We don't charge for it. We used to charge for that. But now it's like we will help people get clear on the offer for free. Because we know if we can help them get clear on the offer, they'll then most likely want to work with us later in the future when they are getting stuff going. So we help people get clear on their offer. And then we help them build it. And then we help them get the traffic. And then we help them sell it. And then deliver on it by helping them build the team. So everything starts to finish. Wow, so like, do you give like a free initial consult call and how it's gonna get one of those? Yeah, well we have a free community. Um, it's, uh, it's at school, on, have you heard of school, the platform? No. School.com, incredible platform. So if you go to school.com and type in my name, Ted Carr, you'll see my name pop up, you can find my community there. Just, we'll put the link below. For the I'll put the link, yeah. yeah. It's a free community, it shows you how to do everything from start to finish. There's easily like ten thousand dollars worth of lessons in there that you can use to hit, uh, go from zero for to ten free. a month, completely for free. And we offer weekly calls to help you get clear on your offer. And then once you're clear on your offer, we show you how to go and build it and crush it and sell it. But if you want our help with that, we can help with that as well. But you'll do it for free on there, well, like more self-service style. Yeah, we'll help them get clear on the offer for free. We'll show them all the roadmap that they can follow and. and get results without us and if they do want to work with us oh, they need coaching to like yeah. get to get them to move in the right direction and handhold them literally yeah handhold like I said when I started I didn't know how to do the funnels or any of the tech or any of the stuff and I couldn't watch tutorial videos got like ADD so I'm like dude can you just like sit down beside me and show me so my friend Joey sat down beside me built it all up with me and I was like I don't offer that same service to people hmm. so now we just do it with them That's but they cool. got to be clear on their offer first because there's no sense in us sitting down and like figuring what we're going to offer together when Paying time. So if you wow. clean it off for first, try to build it on yourself, and if you get stuck, then we can uh, work with you. That's cool, Ted. So, like, I mean, I, I personally would encourage you guys to, if you're working for somebody, don't quit your job and <laughs> jump into Ted's thing, but I would say is keep your job while you're doing that on yeah. your free time. Get involved with Ted's thing because I think everybody should be their own boss, right? That's the only way you're ever going to get paid what you're really worth. Right? Either because your own boss or teaming up with someone. Right. So you're both the boss. Ex that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Team up with someone. So you at least feel like you're, you know. Yeah, you're in control yeah. and you have, you, you, you know, you can have your own free time. Like we were out all day just hiking today, you know, for mm -hmm. hours. Because we can. Because we've set our lives up like that. And like, that to me is another really not talked about aspect of health that is super important. Is, is having my time freedom to not have to go to a job for eight hours that I don't like and then invest your time which is your most valuable resource right and it's something that you're not really believing in but you need to do it because you need to make money yeah we were talking today about time being more valuable than money absolutely because it's actually finite money you can make more of yeah they always print more money and countries in debt and they just keep going into more trillions of dollars and whatever yeah if you need more money go make some sales but it's okay where you don't get more time you're not we were talking, we're probably going to live to be 120 years old. <laughs> That's the goal. After 120, no more of that. <laughs> so, yeah, this has got a, a sticker on our fridge that says it's not the amount of years in your life that matters. It's the amount of life in your years. Mm. Yeah, health span and lifespan. So your health span, yeah. how healthy are you, not just how long are you living. And happy. And happy. <laughs> Happy spend. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd encourage all you guys at least look into Ted's free stuff. He's offering some amazing content for free to get you started and see if it's going to be right for you. Maybe it's mm -hmm. not right for you, and 
you know, that's all right, continue with your job, because some people will not really ever work for themselves and be their own boss and have the time for you, but to me that is like lifted so much stress off of my life when I quit my real job and started working for myself, and then that made me actually perform more, and I have actually worked harder for myself than somebody else, because if I don't, I'm not eating. <laughs> Like, I mean, that was like a long time ago nowadays, but... Yeah, I can't see you being in... I, I couldn't work for somebody, man. I'd rather just be homeless or something, man. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> I'd rather be homeless. <laughs> Damn. But I wouldn't be homeless because I would know how to make money. I mean, minimally, I mean, there's things I would just... I would do. I would just buy wholesale fruit, eat a bunch, and then sell it on the corner, man. <laughs> Whatever, I'll make it work, man. <laughs> Anyways, Ted, this has been a pretty good uh, conversation today. So we talked about, oh, so like, so like, in my opinion, like I see, kind of see you as like, okay, you're doing raw foods and vegan, you know, diet to like fuel you so that you could do your fitness because that's what you love and your performance and track that and then do the business, which is like pretty much encompasses your whole life. Would you say that's pretty much your whole life at this point? Yeah. Every time I'm traveling, I talk to people and like, oh, are you traveling for like business or pleasure? And I'm like. My life is my work. <laughs> like I will work in forever till I'm dead. Yeah, there's no separation for me. Mm -hmm. People say, "Oh, you should separate like business from your life." It's like, no, no, my life is my business. Oh, so, so, I, so I got a good question for you, Ted. So, Ted, all the ladies out there want to know: Are you single? <laughs> Depends which ladies are asking. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, it's, it depends which ladies ask. <laughs> most, if most ladies are asking. Um, I am taken. <laughs> yeah. What ladies will you would be single for? Which ladies are you single for? Yeah. It's yet to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> you can't date Ted, but you can date me. <laughs> I'm single. All right. So, uh, any, any any final words of wisdom you'd like to share with people, Ted, about you know raw foods, fitness, um, business? No words of wisdom. Final words of wisdom. Because you, you, once again, you've been doing raw yeah. vegan for 14 years and you've been around the block. You've, you've changed over time. You've learned. You've gotten smarter. I really like the aspects of you that you really like to track stuff because most raw vegans, though I feel great and that's the only metric that they yeah. use. And that's feeling huge. great is great, but how do your blood tests? Because your blood tests are like looking into the future. Well, if you're deficient in certain nutrients, it, you could feel good now, but then you're yeah. going to tank and you're going to start get the shakes because maybe you, you don't have enough sodium and you're, I don't mean, there's so many things that could pitfall you in the future that, especially noobs, in my opinion, don't see. Yeah, I, I would say, I'm going to go back to something that I did when I was in my early teens, like, or sorry, early 20s, late teens, and that was get crystal clear on my perfect life. Mm. So I would do this often, I should do it again, it's been a while, but I would get a blank piece of paper and I would write my perfect life in the middle. Mm. I'd draw a circle around that. And then I would draw lines coming out like a sun. At the end of each line, I would have like a category of my life. And it would be like relationships and fitness and finances and um, hobbies and spirituality and, and um, my home, you know, just different categories of life. And then within each category, I would describe like what perfection looks like to me. Mm. And most people are fucking clueless what perfection looks like to them. They don't know what they want. And so therefore, they have a very hard time getting what they want. They're just mm. like constantly in this in this spiral of like, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want that. Okay, well, what do you want? And so just like get clear and, 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 and write it out on a, on a piece of paper. And like goal this. setting. It's like goal setting. Yeah, it's a bit... It kind of makes it funner though. Yeah, it's a little it's a little different. Goal setting is very helpful for sure. I recommend it. But I'll tell you how to goal set in just a second. Well, this is more dream setting, setting out. Yeah, think. dream setting. Vision, yeah, vision right. casting. Exactly. So you cast like vision the vision. Board. Mm -hmm. Cast the vision. And then, what you can do, this is so, no one talks about this, it's so freaking helpful though. Once you're clear on everything you want, then you start identifying which person in life already has that thing. Uh, and then you can reverse engineer what they and did And like together. model them to and, see Or you what can like doing. hop on a Zoom call with them and be like, yo, mm. can I pay you like 200 bucks and ask you like how you grew your backyard gardens? I want a backyard garden. Mm. Do you want a backyard garden after eating my stuff, man? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, had, I had a had a backyard garden class. I loved it. Though. Would you eat more greens if oh, you had sure. a backyard garden yeah, yeah, man that were like sure. that just tasted so good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But but that would be the first thing I'd recommend. Just vision cast, and there might be a backyard garden. And then once you're clear on that, then you can find out who already has those those things. Um, 
And then what you can do too, when it comes to goal setting, is like a lot of people set the goal of something that's out of their control, which I think is really dumb. Mm. Like, like my goal is ten thousand dollars a month. That's that's like your desire. That's your vision. But the goal, like you're not in control if you make ten k a month or not. Like your customers could tank, your stripe could shut you down, whatever. It's, like it's kind of out of your control. Exactly. You should do everything in your power to make it happen. So the goal should be like my goal is to upload a piece of content every day. My goal is to get to bed at eight p.m. every day. My goal is to reach out to twenty people in the DMs every day. My goal is to you know spend five dollars a day on ads or something like whatever it is. So something that you can actually do that should be the goal. Not something out of your control. If it's out of your control, it's just it's a vision, which is powerful. You should have that. Um, but the goal should be action oriented. Um, and if you got, if you got those things dialed, man, if you get the goal, you're clear, you're clear on what you want. You know people who already have it, and you're like actively trying to reach out to those people and like talk to them or read their books or podcasts or get coaching from them, hang out with them in person. That's the best. I just got back from three days in Beverly Hills with a bunch of like G's in the business space, a bunch of people who have the results I want. I'm um, hanging around them. Like if you have a garden and I hang out with you, I'm most likely to have a garden. Right. Lissa <clears throat> is crushing it on um, Instagram with her content. I know if I hang out with her more often, my Instagram content's gonna be even better. It's just become like the people you hang around. So the biggest yeah. hack for like getting anything you want. Have like, better friends. Proximity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Proximity. Like have proximity with like the best in class. Mm. Just be my go my vision was to become friends with experts in the field. And I mean, who, that's who am how, I hanging around right now? Right. I'm hanging around with literally the best people in the world. In like in this house right now, the best people in the world are in this home. Thanks, Ted. You're you might be one of them, John. <laughs> I might be one of them. Yeah. So it's like uh, that's the vision, and then you know the goal is like you know, I gotta I gotta probably upload content every day, and I probably gotta um, you know work out at least three times a week to you know to attract attractive people. I wouldn't try to pursue attractive people. You gotta attract them. Mm. And you attract them by becoming an attractive person. Oh, another question I forgot I want to ask you was Is vacuum blending bullshit? <laughs> and what did you think about vacuum blending when you first heard about it? I for sure thought it was a gimmick. Because <laughs> I was like, dude, there's nothing wrong with my smoothies. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with my smoothies. Smoothies are great. Because you've been doing it for how many years before you got into vacuum blending? A decade. Blending? More a than de a decade. More than a decade. Years. I've been doing it for like 13 years, I guess. Yeah. I was totally happy with my, my smoothie game. I, mean, I think that's why it's a hard sell. It is because everybody because thinks they're doing it yeah, right and they, it yeah, can't yeah, be any yeah. better. It can't be any better. Yep. And but there's a lot of things in life like that. Yes. And we'll talk about another example very soon. <laughs> um, the vacuum blender. I was like, I don't need another product. John's just trying to make a buck selling his vacuum blenders. I'm trying to help people, I'm man. Gimmicky. I'm good. And then um, Nate was like, dude, once you vac, you won't go back. I promise. <laughs> like, this is the bomb. And Nate was like very enthusiastic and Nate, Nate sold me on it. So I was like, all right, just send me one, I'll send you some. I'm not a good salesman, Nate's a better salesman yeah, than yeah. I am. Nate's, <laughs> Nate's, Nate's a pro. And so I bought one and my first smoothie, I was like, this is so thick. It's the same smoothie I made all the time. It was just like mangoes and bananas. And it's usually like really runny and fluffy and airy and you know, you drink it, it's like half bubbles. Uh, but this was like thick pudding now all of a sudden. I was like, wow, it's so much thicker and there's so much more flavor and it was brighter yellow. It's usually like kind of pale yellow. It was like bright yellow, flavor was much stronger and it was thick. There was no air gaps, air bubbles. And so I started making it for my friends too and they were coming by and they're like, this is the best movie I've ever had in my life. And I was like, yeah man, vacuum lightning. Um, and then my friend did it too for her friend, for her brother. She gave him like a regular smoothie and then the vacuum blended smoothie. And she asked him which one was better, and he had, didn't know which was which, but he drank one. He's like, obviously this one's better. Why do you even ask him? Like, it's a dumb question. <laughs> it's a dumb question. It's a dumb question. It's so obvious. Like, obvious. And the only difference was, it was a banana blueberry smoothie. The only difference was one was vacuum blended, one was not. And so I was like, okay, well, it's not just me. It's like her brother as well and her, and it's like you guys. Um, it's like a real thing. It's, it's incredible. And it's true. Yeah, once you vac, you don't go back. But um, I think the reason people have a hard time buying Resistance. it is because they're... Yeah, they're already happy with their smoothie game. They don't think it could get better, yeah, they or they don't like it. And the other hack, don't, too. People don't like change. Yeah, the other hack, too, we're talking to Nate and Lisa about this a lot, is like we're used to adding water to our smoothies. You and I don't do that. Right. Because if you want to dilute the flavor of something, you're going to water it down. You water it down. If you want to dilute it, if you want to, yep. Reduce the flavor, you just add more water. 
But people add water to their smoothies. Instead, what do we do? Add juice or add real food. Add juice or some Or just put in fruit. whole oranges, man. Yeah, or, or juicy fruit. Yeah, yeah, juicy fruit. And when you make it, so Nathan, listen, made me a smoothie yesterday. It was pretty good. Made me a smoothie today. Mind blowing, so much better. What was the difference? Today they added orange juice. And both times we're vacuum blend, of course. Yeah, incredible texture. But so yeah. two cups of orange juice instead of two cups of water. That's it. Only difference, and it was like ten times better. Yeah. So just optimize, like, man. It's all about yeah. optimization. Yep. And then uh, I won't, I won't leak anything, but something big is coming in the future for uh, for the raw food. All well, right. Yeah. The raw food was like <laughs> big is coming. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> And subscribe, <laughs> hit the notification bell, <laughs> comment down below for more OK Raw content <laughs> here at JohnKohler.com. I don't have JohnKohler.com. When you see, every time I go to like the toilet, I see the Kohler thing, I think of you, bro. Well, yeah, dude, you, you're, you're, you're going to the John and peeing on the Kohler. That's hilarious. It's my name. I didn't think of that, dude. Oh, that's a new one on you, huh? That's a new one, dude. <laughs> you won't forget every time you're like, hey, that's a good name brand recognition. That's, yeah, you, you come top of mind often. Go to the John, pee on the Kohler. <laughs> yeah, I get peed on every day, and I don't like it. No. <laughs> Damn, dude. So, Ted, what are your different websites for, you know, for your raw food education stuff? And I know yeah. you put out YouTube content and your Instagram and for your business stuff. I'll put all links down below, but what are they? Yeah, Instagram is Fruitarian, YouTube is Ted Carr. And then if you want access to my community, completely for free, it's at school.com. And then once you go there, you can type in my name, Ted Carr. I'll put the direct link to his page on school.com below. Cool. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Cool, Ted. Well, this has been a great episode. Hope you guys learned a lot. You know, we not only learned about raw foods and expanding from a whole fruit diet to definitely eating some greens if you're not eating other vegetables or cook your other vegetables. So that's good. I'm on the same page with that. You got to get enough vegetables. Um, also, we talked about business, which I'm quite passionate about. And I want you guys to, you know, be your own boss. You know, maybe working with Ted is going to be right for you, but I would say at least minimally invest some time, if, especially if you're working for a job that you hate. To go through the school, to go through the classes and the things he has online for free for you guys with no obligation, no nothing, mm -hmm. to see if it's right for you. And if you feel like, yeah, I could do this, I could make a difference in the world, I could change people, help them lose weight, help them, you know, cleanse or get on raw foods or whatever, whatever really you're passionate about, right? And Ted could consult with you to see if it's actually a viable business opportunity, mm -hmm. right? This is, I mean, in some levels, this is actually even more valuable than just eating a raw food diet because, I mean, this, I mean, my business fuels me like every day. It's like I get up, hey, how can I make a difference in the world so that I could, you know, it, because I'm grateful to be alive because, I mean, raw foods in part save my life and I'm glad to be alive and have a purpose in life. I mean, it gives me, it gives my life purpose, my business. You know what like else your business people. gives you, John? Your business gives you the ability to drink <laughs> $9 water. John drinks $9 water. Because of his business. If John had a job, he would not be drinking. I would be drinking nine dollar bottle of water. Water. Yeah, and this is yeah. not a big bottle, this is five hundred milliliters. Yeah, half a liter. But it is depleted of deuterium. <laughs> you have to look that one up and I will have videos on the future. But the other thing, if you don't want to buy nine dollar bottle of water, you don't have to. Because the cheap way to do that is to juice leaves, not fruit. And that's a whole other topic that I'm not looking to discuss. But fruits concentrate deuterium. Leaves push it out to get rid of it. Carbohydrate root crops draw in deuterium. That's this next level of stuff I'm not going to talk about today. But anyways, that'll give you something to think about. So yeah, we know Ted's websites. Yeah. Check them out. Get involved with his business stuff. If, if it feels right for you, just check into it. You know, eat more fruits and vegetables. Get some greens in you. And hang out with people who've got the results. Right. That you that's want. very important, man. Like, have good friends. Yeah. Quality people, people and model people that have what you want. And to get rate. off the internet so you can actually do this to people. Like <laughs> this is like a this is like a lacking. Get thing. off your phone. Like one of the things is I'm barely ever on my phone. People hate it. I think I was like dating a girl and she just stopped texting me because I didn't respond for two days and I was like, dude, I really just don't check my phone. But whatever. <laughs> yeah. And no phone life is very. Yeah, that's way good. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode with Ted Carr and want more videos, because I'm probably going to link up with him in the future, one of his places around the world that he, that he stays at, <laughs> give this video a big thumbs up. More importantly, share this with other people that may be already eating a raw food diet, maybe more interested in business, right, and want to start their own business. This has been already a good episode to teach you guys how to get involved with starting your own business if you're not business-minded at all. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button, as he said earlier. <laughs>
So you don't miss out on my new content I'm generating every five to seven days. And make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my videos come out. And finally, of course, check my past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 700 episodes at this time to teach you guys how to eat healthy fruit and vegetable based raw diet to be as healthy as you can. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRAW.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always best.